Now this video is looking at Layer Masks and Affinity Designer for iPad, a beginner's guide. Another video in the series. So the first thing to do is open Affinity Designer on your iPad. Open a photo. Place it on an artboard or a canvas and you can see it there. It's a photo in the Layer Studio. Now create a new vector layer in the Layer Palette. and create a vector shape and place it on top of the photo. It can be any colour, it doesn't really matter, I've just left it as white, that's what it came up as. Resize the shape and place it where you would like it to be on your image. Now I've got that absolutely horizontally and vertically centred, just because you can. With your shape created, your layers will look like this. Now it puts what appears to be two layers there, but it's just the way the thing works. And still on the bottom is your photo layer. In the layer panel, drag the photo or background layer over onto the object shape layer. The image will now appear in the shape. Now you drag it onto the object shape layer, not the top layer. Select the effects, the FX option in the side panel. Brings up all of those options there. Now I'm going to select Outer Glow, which you can see is the probably the second one down there in the list of options. You can, you can add effects like Outer Glow and change the amount of glow around the edge. Now I've selected Outer Glow and to get the Outer Glow to work, to bring up the context toolbar on the bottom, Remember, you have to tap the words out of glow. It's no good just turning it on to get the context toolbar. You have to select the words next. Turn it on, select the words. That way you know it's correct. And you'll see there's a color panel, a color panel sorry, down the bottom. And with that color panel, I created the outer glow. In the layer studio, by selecting only the background and not the mask, you'll be able to move the shape around to ensure the correct part of the background is showing. Now, the image at the back is slightly off center, but if you wanted the roadway showing through the trees behind the rows, then you move the background layer, or in this case, the photo. If you select both the background and the mask, both the image and the shape will move together. This can be a tricky little exercise until you get used to it. I would, I would encourage you to experiment quite a lot with this one to get it right, just what you want. Now I've used a white background, you'll notice, on this whole task. If I had have selected transparent background, the entire background, the entire um, canvas, transparent, then the heart-shaped rose would be sitting on a transparent background, which makes it very easy to copy and place in other areas or against other images without having to get rid of the white background. Some of the things to keep in mind. Thank you for watching and hopefully subscribing to my YouTube channel. Keeps me busy and keeps me happy. And you can subscribe at that address or just click on subscribe and like right here on the channel.